Hi, my name's Luke and welcome to my channel. Tonight we're going to be taking a photograph of M101, the pinwheel galaxy in Ursa Major. Stay tuned. Well, it's about quarter to eight now and I'm just about to get started plate solving and aligning myself with M101 as I mentioned earlier. There's about a 50% moon in the sky to deal with but there's nothing really to be done for that so I'm just gonna have to see what I can get regardless of its presence. Uh, and I guess for those of you who don't know what plate solving is, it's basically allowing software to look through your telescope using your camera and align you very precisely with uh, the stars by using the positions of those stars that it sees in your pictures to get you aligned perfectly with your target. My imaging plan's underway now. Uh, I've set it to take 30 five minute exposures. Um, I'll probably check focus and such before that 30 finishes, uh, as just after autofocusing, I always set a focus mark, and that's to tell it what temperature it was when the last focus was completed. Um, but yeah, uh, unfortunately, I'm slightly delayed uh, getting started imaging due to uh, having to fully recalibrate my motor focuser. It had completely forgot its position, unfortunately, so um, it, th it thought it was at position zero out of 90 odd thousand steps and thus wouldn't let me focus as it was too close to one of its end limits. But it were easily enough rectified once I'd figured out what was going on. Uh, and at least it's, it's working fine now and we're underway. <laughs> Well, we're on about 20 to 10 now, uh, and I'd say the night's moving along really smoothly. There's not been any cloud around. Uh, the moon's influence is dropping now uh, as it starts to set low in the, uh, the western sky. Um, the temperature dropped by about two degrees since sunset, so I have had to perform another autofocus now, but it's really a painless procedure now that I've got the, uh, the Sesto Senso up and working. Um, I'd like to be able to show you a few of the subframes that I've collected so far just so you get an idea of what an individual frame looks like compared to the final stacked and processed image so that maybe if you're capturing your own images at home and you see that you know it's all washed out and there's nothing really anything to see uh, on the individual frames it is still worth persevering and stacking. Well, we're currently on quarter past 11, uh, and I thought I'd bring you a little update. So far I've captured 32 five minute exposures on M101, and uh, they all look pretty good. Uh, I think I'll probably have to get rid of a couple from earlier on in the night, where uh, the target was quite low and the moon also quite high. Uh, but largely I think they're all keepers, um, apart from just those few. I would say that when I first started out imaging years ago, if I'd have seen these images coming in and looked at them on my screen and I thought oh, really I should quit this target because I'm not going to get anything from it but over the years I've learned that even if you can't quite see anything uh, in individual exposures it's still worth sticking it out and trying because uh, the stacking process really can bring in some uh, 
some fantastic details that you can't make out per exposure. So it's always worth giving it a good go. Well, it's currently 20 past one and it's time for another update. Things are going fantastically well uh, and actually reviewing the data now that's just been coming in, looking at these particular subs uh, since the moon's really set low, um, the quality of them looks so much higher now and I'm actually quite excited about how good the final image could be. I've never really managed to capture a particularly pleasing image of this target because it's got such low surface brightness, but uh, I'm hoping that tonight due to the fact that I'm able to get quite a lot of data if uh, the weather holds, I could well have my uh, best ever image of M101. We're actually approaching uh, the time where I'll do a meridian flip in about 50 minutes. Uh, and there's actually a tool on astrophotography tool which lets me know when that's gonna be. Um, and I'll show that to you in a moment. For those of you who don't know, uh, the reason that we do a meridian flip is basically when your target moves from being in the eastern side uh, of the meridian over to the western side and you could imagine the meridian line as being a, a line in the sky from north to south uh, and you flip your scope so that basically you don't collide with the uh, the tripod legs with your camera or any other low part uh, of the telescope so just following on from what i was talking about before about the meridian flip and uh, such Basically, I wanted to show you this little tool in uh, astrophotography tool itself, which I find really useful. Um, and it's basically this. So in the corner, you've got this little deep sky darkness clock. It's gonna show you um, this part of the graph denotes daytime. The next shaded line denotes nautical twilight. The next shaded line denotes astronomical twilight. And the black bar in between um, denotes actual astronomical darkness, full astronomical darkness. And then as you can see, in the morning, uh, when dawn starts to break, it'll go to astronomical um, dawn, nautical dawn, and then so forth onto full brightness. Um, you probably notice also there's a white bar going straight through the middle of it. That's denoting, yeah, it's always showing your current moon phase here, and it's also showing you how long through the night that the moon will actually be permeating the sky. Um, which can be useful to plan any particular observations where you might need full darkness uh, to perform them. So in this case you could see that there's a small window right before dawn where you have no moon in the sky and full astronomical darkness still available to you. So the next part of it also is uh, this little timer here so it's showing you currently 2.11 uh, and that's denoting the time at which this particular target, that'll change per target, uh, at which this particular target will transit the meridian line for going from east to west. Um, and it also flashes across to a second number, so it's 39 minutes now. That tells me how long I've got left uh, before this target will pass that line, and uh, then I really need to start thinking about performing a meridian flip to cause, uh, so to prevent the chance of any uh, tripod collisions and such. Well guys, it's about four in the morning and uh, dawn's actually set to start breaking in around about 20, 25 minutes. I don't know if you can hear, uh, there's a lot of birds chirping in the trees behind me. Um, yeah, in total I've captured around about 85 good uh, five minute exposures on M101. And at this point I'm almost certain that I'm set to have captured my best ever image of that target. I'm really excited to stack it up and show you the end result. Uh, I hope I can present something nice for you all. And uh, yeah, this is probably my last update now. I'll just uh, perhaps take a time lapse as uh, the sun rises, that should be quite nice. But yeah, thank you all very, very much indeed for your time and uh, for watching these videos and showing your support. It honestly, it's, uh, I, I couldn't have expected such a, a warm reception from everybody. It's been absolutely fantastic. I. Uh, I love interacting with you all and reading your comments, uh, that's tremendous and I have so much fun making these videos that I just don't want to stop, so yeah, hopefully see you next time and clear skies.